Now, um, the other part of this is, like I said, we need to forest our hills. So, um, so what we could do here is um, a few different treatments for um, reforesting these hills. Now, one would be to, you know, reforest the whole thing with a sort of a closed revegetation. That's one option. The other option is, which might be palatable to a lot more um, ranchers, is to do something more like a wide spaced forestry. So, um, got a few trees. They've just been through a fire, so we could. Uh, <laughs> so, with these trees here, what we do is, um, is actually have um, them at sort of more wide spacing. Uh, you know, a good, good 20 yards or something like that. So it's actually uh, mimicking a uh, open woodland sort of system. We can put them up there like so. Now, even in this micro landscape, you can already see that uh, these deciduous trees, as they are, um, or burnt trees, are um, casting a bit, little bit of shade, um, which is a good thing. It's nothing like having plenty of shade. That's something that a lot of the livestock in, um, in dry land or semi-arid zones suffer from is an amount of exposure, just as they do in uh, more cool, humid landscapes. So we get a few of those sorts, sorts of trees put up there, then, um, then that works quite well. And that will um, start to create a good open woodland And give us some trees so that we've got some shelter. Now what we can also do is we can select those trees, select the species of those trees so that they actually have some additional yields. So they might be species that give us timber for fencing. Grazing properties in particular have very high fencing timber needs, right? And I don't see anywhere that anybody is growing any timber dedicated for on-farm use. It's always having to come from somewhere. And it all comes off the bottom line, right? So that's something on our farm at home, we had four different lots of different ages. So any time we needed to go do fencing, well, it wasn't a matter of paying $60 a post, it was a matter of just going out with a chainsaw and spending a, a, some time. So we can use those timbers for, um, for fencing we also might want to select species that uh, have a durable timber but also drop a pod or a, a seed or a fruit that's um, actually feed for the animals themselves, for the livestock themselves. So species like honey locusts, for example, uh, an American species works very well. Um, even fruit trees are quite good. Um, and you've got uh, a whole host of other fodder trees. Even your own oak trees are excellent. Oak trees have produce acorns, which are high carbohydrate, small amount of po um, protein, but high carbohydrate. Now they're falling at a time of year when there's no other feed. You know, you look around at these hills at the moment, there's no feed. Everybody is providing supplementary feed. So that's one thing that we could do. Another thing that we could do is um, be a bit tighter with the spacings and just put it into dedicated timber growing forestry system um, where you're only doing a sort of uh, very ephemeral grazing maybe once a year as opposed to more often in this uh, wide space system so there's a range of options there um, I think it's something that people here in California um, and in the US at large need to develop a culture of tree farming um, and integrate, integrate the trees into their grazing or other agricultural systems so that they can get the benefits um, that trees bring in moderating climate, providing shade, re increasing shelter, etc. Um, well, and saving your money when you have to buy... And timber is a declining resource around the planet. Um, and obviously it does a good job from the carbon perspective as well. All right, so we'll come back down into our completed landscape here from a key line perspective. And um, what we might want to do here is also, if 
find the best places to put trees in. So um, we might look at um, this slope. Any slope is is a good place to put trees from the perspective, especially where you've got any potential for land slip. And uh, just to intercept the rain, intercept the wind, etc. We can put those across the slope on a bit of a contour or something. Well, different trees have different root systems and um, I would always be looking as a permaculturalist, I would always be looking at species that have uh, multiple purposes, um, multiple, multiple yields. So those species that I mentioned before would be ideal. But if you, want to, if you felt that you had enough of those, you, there's, um, you could always uh, put those trees in and um, put in some timber trees or whatever else that were a bit more specific in their yield. So this is a, what's called a diversion drain that runs from this dam to this dam. This here was the irrigation drain that's irrigating all of this area here, right? Um, what we could do with this is in between here, we could put in what's called a contour strip forest as per yeomans because it's only during heavier rainfall that we actually get um, this actually running or when this dam overflows and then it flows to this one here. So the rest of the time, he would act something similar to a swale. Now a swale is a level uncompacted ditch on contour. This has got a slight grade to it. It's only, you know, one yard every 400 yards. So it's barely discernible as having a grade. It is so gentle. So it's only, it's only when we get a bigger rainfall event that it'll actually run. The rest of the time, the water will actually settle in there and infiltrate into to, um, to feed these trees. So it's a very, very good um, irrigation system. Yeah, yeah. That works extremely well. Now again, um, these could be timber trees. They could be, uh, you know, as we call them, tree crops, species that have multiple yields. It could be, even be an orchard that you put in there. So we've got that. Now um, here's our uh, irrigation through here. What we can do now is, like I said, we can pick up, catch that excess irrigation, bring it down into the next pond which then irrigates along here again. Now, from that is another place in between where we put our trees. So now we're starting to get something like a bit of terracing in this landscape, with the terraces being divided by these trees. Now, that's, that's um, fantastic, I think. Um, we've got a balance of sheltered pasture of say wide spaced agroforestry or tree crops we've got irrigated pasture or crop um, that really enlivens a whole range of options we've got this these slopes on some properties that are quite stable enough to be able to graze only made more stable by um, by putting trees into them and we've got levels of shelter sort of almost the tops of the trees are actually coming from one into the other so we're getting, if this is our prevailing wind direction, we're getting lots and lots of shelter on the system.